welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar 2 as is our practice let us begin the lecture by the recitation of the mangala charana vishvesham sachidanandam वंदेहम यो खिलन जगत चरी करती बरी भरती संजरी हरती लीलया विश्वेशम सच्चिदानंदम वंदेहम यो खिलन जगत चरी करती बरी भरती संजरी हरती लीलया we have started the study of avyayi bhava samasa after having studied the theoretical background of the compound making in sanskrit we have already studied in detail the tatpurusha samasa in the first course on samasa in paninian grammar in this second course we are focused on the remaining three types of samasas namely the avyayi bhava samasa as well as bahuvrihi samasa as well as dvandva samasa and we have started going deeper in our understanding of avyayi bhava samasa in this particular lecture we introduce the very first sutra which lays down certain semantic conditions for the avyayi bhava samasa to take place we also noticed in the previous lecture how the avyaya which is a part of the avyayi bhava samasa determines the form of the entire output avyayi bhava samasa so in pratidina prati is an avyaya and the output samasa pratidina is also an avyaya therefore the name of the samasa avyayi bhava also states this particular fact the feature of the avyayi bhava samasa is stated briefly in the form of this equation where we have x and y two independent separate padas having independent and separate padarthas as well as swaras but they are semantically interrelated so the speaker decides to merge them together and generate one output which is in the form of xy now in xy which is one unit as far as the form is concerned as far as the meaning is concerned and the accent is concerned now in this unit x acts as the head and that's why it is shown in bold characters so formally x acts as the head semantically the meaning of x acts as the head of the samasa called avyayi bhava this is an extremely important feature to remember in the ashtadhyayi 
the avyayi bhava samasa is treated in different sections for example the samasa vidhayaka sutra the sutras which prescribe the avyayi bhava samasa are stated from 215 onwards up to 2122 excluding so from 215 up to 2121 avyayi bhava samasa is stated is prescribed 215 is avyayi bhavaha and 2121 is anya padarthe cha saudnyayam this is a section of rules which deals with the prescribing of the avyayi bhava samasa there is another small section in 5.4 namely 5.4.107 up to 5.4.112 these sutras prescribe the suffix to be added at the end of the avyayi bhava samasa so these sutras are called samasant pratyaya vidhayak sutra and then in 62 we have a few sutras scattered here and there which also deal with the accent of the avyayi bhava samasa they are called swara vidhayak sutras prescribing the accent of the avyayi bhava samasa like 62 121 now let us look at this first sutra 2.1.6 which prescribes an avyayi bhava samasa there are only two padas in this particular sutra the first pada is avyayam and the second pada is a huge samasa itself which is a dwandva samasa which contains several components they are vibhakti samipa samruddhi vriddhi artha bhava atyaya asamprati shabda pradurbhava paschat yatha anupurvya yoga padya sadrishya sampatti sakalya and ant these are all the constituents which make a big dwandva samasa at the end of which appears the word vachana and therefore using the maxim dvandvante shruyamanam padam pratyekam abhi sambadhyate which means that the word that is found at the end of the dvandva compound is to be associated with each of the members of the dvandva compound so vachana is associated with all the previous components of this dvandva samasa vachana here means expression expression of these elements what are these elements these are nothing but the semantic conditions these are the semantic conditions laid down by panini in this manner which are the backbone which are the background of the avyayi bhava samasa i'll read the semantic conditions once again one by one vibhakti samip samruddhi vriddhi artha bhava atyaya asamprati shabda pradurbhav paschat yatha anupurvya yoga padya sadrishya sampatti sakalya and ant in all there are 16 words 
which are part of this dvandva samasa so there are 15 semantic conditions stated in this particular sutra so there are 16 semantic conditions visible in this sutra the word yatha has got four meanings amongst which three are the semantic conditions for the samasa so we have in all 18 semantic conditions stated in this particular sutra so there are two padas avyayam this pada is in prathama vibhakti and the result is that it becomes an upasarjana because of the sutra prathama nirdishtam samasa upasarjanam and then by the sutra upasarjanam purvam there is purva nipata of avyaya so in the avyayi bhava samasa avyaya occupies the initial position of the samasa the second pada which consists of semantic conditions is in the seventh case which means in the sense of these are all the semantic conditions in which avyaya gets compounded and we have read these conditions let us reread them vibhakti samipa samruddhi vriddhi arthabhav atyaya asamprati shabda pradurbhav paschat yatha anupurvya yogapadya sadrashya sampatti sakalya and ant and we said that the word yatha has got four meanings and they are also part of these semantic conditions these are the words that are continued from the previous sutras <coughs> sup is continued and sup is 1/1 it is continued from 212 supa which is 3/1 is continued from 214 sah is also continued from 214 sup which is 1/1 which continues from 212 matches with the 11 of avyayam in the sutra avyayi bhavah is also 1/1 which continues from 215 samasah 1/1 also continues from 213 prak kadarat samasah and of course the semantic condition which is very basic and foundational continues from 211 namely samarthah padavidhi so after having put all these together we get the following meaning of the sutra which is briefly summed up in sanskrit and which is translated in english on this particular slide vibhaktyadishu artheshu vidyamanam avyayam subantam samarthena subantena sah samasyate 
अव्ययी भावश्च समासो भवति आई रिपीट विभक्त्यादिषु अर्थेषु विभक्ति समीप समृद्धि वृद्धि एक्सेट्रा विभक्त्यादिषु अर्थेषु विद्यमानम अव्ययम विद्यमानम अव्ययम सुबंतम समर्थेन सुबंतेन सह समस्यते अव्ययी भावश्च समासो भवति You can see the correspondence of the words stated in this meaning and the words which are continued as well as the ones which are present in the sutra so the meaning of this sutra is any indeclinable subanta any avyaya subanta denoting the sense of vibhakti etc is compounded with any other semantically related subanta and the resultant compound is called avyayi bhava i repeat any indeclinable subanta avyayam subantam denoting the sense of vibhakti etc vibhaktyadishu artheshu vidyamanam is compounded samasyate with any other semantically related subanta samarthena subantena sah and the resultant compound samasah is called avyayi bhavah avyayi bhavah this is how the meaning of this sutra is made so what are these semantic conditions let us jot them down one by one first one is vibhakti which meaning which means case ending literally what it means in this sutra is the meaning of the case ending which is added after a nominal root namely pratipadika after a verbal root as well that is dhatu to make it a pad and we have seen examples of both these types of vibhaktis when we studied the background theory of compound formation so vibhakti is the first semantic condition then comes samipa which means near or close then comes samruddhi which means prosperity or welfare then vriddhi which means failure or loss or want of prosperity then there is artha bhav which means the absence of any element arthasya abhavah then there is atyaya which means passing or overcoming then asamprati which means not now shabda pradurbhav which means spreading the word shabdasya pradurbhav then there is paschat which means after yatha which means the meanings of the word yatha and there are four meanings of the word yatha first one is yogyata which means fitness or propriety vipsa which means repetition padarthanati vritti which means not crossing the capability of an element and finally sadrashya which means similarity then we have anupurvya which means a sequence yoga padya which means simultaneity then we have sadrashya which is similarity then we have sampatti which means be fitting self esteem anurupah atma bhavah as we shall study later on sakalya which means entirety and finally ant which means end we also note that vachana is related to 
every member of this big compound as it occurs at the end of this big dvandva compound on account of the maxim dvandvante shruyamanam padam pratyekam abhi sambadhyate the pada which is heard at the end of the dvandva samasa is associated with each member of that respective dvandva samasa what this assumes is that the indeclinables the avyayas denote these various meanings in particular semantic con- contexts this is very important so let us briefly study which words are avyayas stated in the ashtadhyayi in this context in the ashtadhyayi from sutra 1137 up to 41 there is a bunch of five sutras which define what is an avyaya in sanskrit the first one is swaradi nipatam avyayam 1137 The second one is Taddhitascha Sarva Vibhakti 1138. Then we have Krinme Jantaha 1139 followed by Khtvato Sunkasunaha 1140 and followed by Avyayi Bhavascha 1141. These are the five sutras which state which words are Avyayas in Sanskrit. let us look at each sutra in some detail the first one is swaradi nipatam avyayam in this sutra swaradi nipatam is one pad and avyayam is the other pad avyayam is the technical term which is defined as swaradi nipatam swaradi nipatam has got two constituents swaradi and nipata let us look at what is swaradi swaradi is obviously a compound which means swar adihi yasya a list of words at the beginning of which comes the word swar here is that list this is not an exhaustive list it is available in the ganapatha on this particular sutra but the important ones are stated here swar antar pratar sanutar uchais nichais shanais yas shwas diva sayam chiram alam vina nana and swasti this is a list of words at the beginning of which appears the word swar therefore this list is called swaradi and this gana is called akriti gana an open ended bag of words this is swaradi what is nipata nipatas are stated by the sutra 1456 which is prag rishvarat nipataha and these are the words that are listed down as nipatas pr para sam anu av nis nir dus dur vi ang ni adhi api ati su ud abhi prati pari and up these are the nipatas there are many more nipatas stated in the section 1456 up to 1497 these are some selective nipatas stated here so swaradi nipatam avyayam defines avyaya by enumeration then we have taddhitascha asarva vibhakti 1138 which means a list of words ending in certain tadhita suffixes is called avyaya for example tataha 
यतः तत्र यत्र तदा यदा सर्वदा सदा दीज आर द वर्ड्स एंडिंग इन द तद्धित सफिक्स तस् त्र एंड दा रिस्पेक्टिवली सो दीज आर कॉल्ड अव्ययस सिमिलरली द सफिक्सेस लाइक शस अम आम कृत्व सच तस् वत् एंड ना दीज आर ऑल्सो द तद्धित विच अपियर एट द एंड ऑफ एनी वर्ड एंड देन दैट वर्ड इज टर्म्ड एज अव्यय then the next sutra is kran me janta 1139 which means a krit suffix which ends in m and a h is called avyaya so those suffixes are like am or tum se ase and a deriving the forms like swadunkaram where is, there is an am suffix kartum which has got tum suffix vakshe which has, which has got se suffix jivase which has got ase suffix and drishe which has got the suffix a all these words all these suffixes they are added after the verbal roots and they are krit suffixes therefore so these words which end with these krit suffixes ending in m and h they are termed as avyaya similarly ktva to sun ka suna 1140 which means words ending in the suffixes ktva to sun and ka sun are also termed as avyayas the words are like chitva jitva patitva which are the examples of the words ending in the suffix tva and there are many more words of this kind similarly udeto ho apakarto ho these are the examples having the suffix tos or tosun and finally visrupaha atrudaha they have got the suffix kasun and so all these words they are termed as avyaya ktva tosun kasuna and finally avyayi bhavascha the compound avyayi bhava is also called an avyaya which is to be derived by the sutra 216 with the semantic conditions mentioned therein these are the avyayas stated in the ashtadhyayi of panini what we study next is how the processing of the avyayi bhava samasa begins with these semantic conditions and how it progresses and how to derive the final output in the form of a nominal root or a pratipadika this we shall study next these are the texts referred to thank you very much